coming up next on Real Answers. But there is no prosthesis for an amputated spirit. Mm, that's good. And, and there is none. And in America, I believe the orphan heart, as I call it, is the single, that's the number one psychological and emotional problem. Yeah. And, and it makes the gospel, it pulls the gospel, Bob, right to the center. Real Answers with Bob Yandia. Bob Yandia. Real Answers. Real Answers with Bob Yandia. Welcome to Real Answers with Bob Yandian. Today we have a special broadcast with a special friend. Mario Murillo has been my personal friend as well as a friend of our church for many years. God's gifted him and anointed him to speak to people on the streets, street gangs, and take what's going on in our country today and draw from the Word of God to give answers to people so that their lives can be changed. It's a real honor to have you here, Mar Mario. Well, it's great to be here, Bob. Almost messed your name up. No, you, you good did friend. all right. Real yes. good friend, yes. We can do that. We can do that. <laughs> We're going to start out with some comments from the streets. What do people think about street gangs? What do people think about the problems that we have in life today? Why do you think gangs are such a problem in America today? It's just uh, being from Los Angeles, it's just <laughs> where you're growing up and how the environment is, uh, economy, money and stuff. And it comes down to um, help and how the family is, how the parents treat their kids. They're not always around to you know, give, give advice, so they look up to other friends and they just form together to do things like that. Do you think there's a solution to the problem? A solution? From knowing, from experience, from friends and stuff, there isn't much of a solution. It's just maybe more youth uh, groups, uh, camps and stuff like that. Uh, have them go out and do more things like that would be good. Mario, why do you think there is a problem with street gangs today? You know, it's amazing, Bob. You'd, the last verse of the Old Testament was a warning. It said, I'm going to send Elijah, mm -hmm. and he'll turn the hearts of the children to the fathers and the fathers to the children, lest I strike the land with a curse. And we've been struck with a curse. It's, gangs are not hard to explain. You, all you got to do is take the father out of the equation. You have an orphan generation. And they huddle with each other to find identity and safety. Fear is the fuel that generates gangs. Mm. Gangs are well organized, far more than people realize. They have codes of ethics. They have strong values. Uh, and they're killers. One of, some gangs you can't join until you kill someone. Yeah. And, and so when you look at the structure of it, they, they form a sub-economy. They nurture each other. But that common bond is their orphans. They have the, the, in fact, if you were to do a research on, the, on the, all the work they've done on orphanages and orphans and how orphans act and how orphans react, it, the identical nature of the gang member and a classical orphan is overwhelming. So do you think possibly this is the secret? I know we often come up with terms, and I get, I think it's an overused term. We found the secret of something. But really, the core of, of gangs, is this what it is? Well, rightfully said, I know from personal experience when I began to preach as a father to wayward children who needed a dad, the results at the altar are exponentially greater. Really? So this is... Uh, this has been something that was a, a revelation to me. Mm -hmm. And it is, if you want to call it the secret, it's, it's the explanation mm -hmm. that exceeds all others. Yeah, I know. Jesus, we often talk about, you know, what's the key to this, the key to that. Jesus really said, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. And there's many keys to different things, but oftentimes, again, we get right down to it. What's the problem in a person's life? Well, really, it's sin. And, and the, you know, the fact that they've been... Uh, just, you know, take, taken away from God. And the word of God is to bring them back and salvation is to bring them back. But again, there's so many symptoms that occur symptoms. when a person has been broken away from God. You know, Adam sinned and that, that passed on all men. And that's the problem we have today. Right. People are saying, I'm okay, you're okay. Well, without Jesus Christ, we're not okay. No, we're not. And, and in, in the man in the, uh, you know, in the, in the uh, office, his problems may be different than the guy that's on the street, you know, a gang member. But uh, what you're talking about here really, really, you know, I think it's something that needs to be addressed in our nation today. Well, you know, uh, how do you explain millions of suburban white kids 
listening to rap and l loving the thug hip hop culture. Yeah. It's not that they identify with the style or the clothes, but they're reading in the lyrics the cry of their own orphaned heart. Uh -huh. They feel the same alienation and anger. Mm -hmm. And it, it really is, um, it is our, uh, a young man's hatred is, is focused on the things he needs the most and was deprived of. Oh. One is the American dream. The other is perhaps the love of a woman. Mm -hmm. uh, and the third is this dad that never was there. Yeah. You know, we did an outreach in L.A. at 7,000 gang members. We did a skit, a drama that depicted a home in the ghetto. And the mother walks in, audience silent. The kids are in this squalid living room we created on this stage. When the father walked in, 7,000 people began to spontaneously boo. Mm. He hadn't said a word, he hadn't done a thing. They just began to boo. Wow. The other thing is we just watched Alec Baldwin melt down on, on, a, on the, leaving a voicemail right. on a telephone, screaming. And then, you know, we wonder, well, where did the fathers go? What happened? Well, in the movies, we exalt the pimp and the player. Mm -hmm. And in the family court system, we bash the father. Mm -hmm. And lesbian couples want to have kids without a dad. Uh, the, every talk show says eventually it's all the fault of the, this one identified figure. You can't watch a sitcom where the father figure isn't a bumbling idiot. Yeah, right. That's and, right. And, and it all adds up to this one thing. And the, the, the therapists say, okay, there's one ingredient. It's funny. If you leave the father out, a kid does badly in uh, academics, in school. Even if a father doesn't know algebra or any kind of uh, scholastic, it, just sitting with a child while they do their work, mm -hmm. because it's the dad, the grades skyrocket. Right, right. It's, a, it, it's part of the system. Well, it's actually part of our own creation. God created it to where that exactly. necessary for that male figure to be there, and the female cannot do, be everything. Can't be everything. You know, the only the only thing we come back to is if a person knows Jesus Christ, you know, they can do a whole lot better than the world can, but there's still no substitute for a father being there. No, and this thing that I discovered, Bob, as you're saying, I found it in the gangs, but it's everywhere. It's, in fact, I, I wrote an article on this saying, there's trouble in the church of Oprah. Mm -hmm. Because all of this positive thinking and, and technology for self-help, Dr. Phil, Anthony Robbins, mm -hmm. the book, the, you know, the, the Secret, it, it doesn't work. Because, it, and I love this scene in Scent of a Woman where Colonel Frank Slade is giving this speech. He said, you know, I've seen kids with their arms torn off and their legs blown off, but there is no prosthesis for an amputated spirit. Mm, that's good. And, and there is none. And in America, I believe the orphan heart, as I call it, is the single, that's the number one psychological and emotional problem. Yeah. And, and it makes the gospel, it pulls the gospel, Bob, right to the center. Because yeah. nothing else. It's like you can hire a life coach, a guru, you can buy a book, you can it, it, do all this interior decorating on yourself. But until you're restored to your lost father, mm -hmm. who is not your physical parent, but actually God, none of those feelings that you long for will ever be there. Well, one thing I'm hearing you say, and I think it's important, most of, uh, many that are watching this program right now are those orphaned kids, but they don't have to not have a dad to be an orphan child. They have a dad that's not there, a dad that's too busy, a dad that won't take time with them. And I think this message really goes out to me, the men that are watching today, that it's time they, they stand up and begin to be the father. There Absolutely. And, and, quit realize, and realize something. You know, I remember when I was growing up, my parents, you know, they were talking about getting another house. And my sister and I talked to each other and said, we don't care if we get another house. But it was important to mom and dad. And right. that was important for them to, to buy that house and get a bigger house. When I think sometimes we think what the kids need is more of this and more of that, when they really need more of us. That's exactly right. And I, it's the scripture where the Bible talks about the husband said that, uh, you know, Jesus Christ gave himself for the church. Husbands need to realize it's not the money that the wife's looking for or the kids are looking for, it's them. And, you know, if I'm lonely, if God dropped a Cadillac every day in my driveway that I was lonely, that wouldn't help any. No. You know, and we often look for that in life. Here, I'll just drop this on you and I'll go and do my thing and this will take care of it. It's not. That personal presence is so important. You know, if you were going to fast, it'd be harder to fast around food than away from food. Yeah. It would heighten the, the frustration. And for a child to have access to a father and get none of the benefit of that access, 
reopens that wound every day. Yeah. And there's this layer of, I'm not worth anything. I'm not worth it. I'm not valuable to anyone. And, uh, and things don't stick. And I was amazed. I made a discovery. In preaching to the gangs and the drug addicts, they'd get born again. Mm -hmm. The benefit of this spirit of adoption that we're going to talk about in a minute was being felt, and they could not put it into words. Mm -hmm. They had no idea what they were getting. But they, they felt like they didn't have to be on drugs. They power, were empowered to not stay in the gangs because the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, completed their nature mm -hmm. and put in them all the things that they didn't get as children from their father. So that spirit of adoption from the Word of God that Jesus is talking about, exactly. actually it comes the moment we're saved. That's exactly it's not like something right. we have to, to progressively move into. It's there from the moment. It's Jesus. there from the moment. It begins to literally have an effect that we're not aware of. Mm -hmm. And um, that's Romans chapter 8, verse 15, mm -hmm. which is powerful. It says that our spirit bears witness with his spirit that we're the sons of God. And we cry, Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. It literally means that we have this outburst. I'm not an orphan. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a biological accident. I'm wanted, I'm needed, I'm loved. I'm in a family where I'm not competing for my identity. Mm -hmm. And that has a powerful effect. Yes. Now I wanna add one thing too, another principle is that we believe in this culture that through achievement, we develop self-worth. Mm -hmm. We now know that's absolutely false. Mm -hmm. That one of the, the primary symptom of an orphan is to feel like you're nothing even after you've won, even after you've succeeded. Like when I looked into the eyes of Britney Spears on TV, I saw her shaved head and I looked at her and I, everyone was making fun of her because that's what this culture does. If you admit you're an orphan or you act like one, all the other orphans like piranha mm -hmm. are going to run and feed on you because their own desperate need. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her and I began to cry because I looked in her eyes. I saw fear, which is the classic uh, symptom of, a, of an orphan. Mm -hmm. I'm scared to death. Yeah. Today I'm the big shot. I married this, this man I shouldn't have married. I'm living wrong. I'm doing crazy things. They desperately crave attention only to want, realize that their expressions to get attention make them behave in a manner that worsens everything, Yes, makes it worse. Uh, we've gone all around this, but could you give me a definition of what an orphan heart is? An orphan heart is the biblical definition of a, of a person with Adam's curse separated from God, mm -hmm. then having that separation further reinforced by a family that just doesn't work. Yeah. They never got it. It's right. so what Scott Peck said, if a child does not obtain self-esteem from their parents, it's likely they'll ever have it as adults. Mm -hmm. So it comes from their mom and dad. That's yeah. the principal source. So it's interesting to think now that here's a person born in the earth and, and they might even have a fairly good family. Right. But there's a deeper root problem than that, that even with a good family, they can feel inside themselves completely lost in life. It's not until you come to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and get connected back to the God that created us and made us that you really have fulfillment. You know, and the thing is, like I said, drug addicts, when they get born again and spirit filled, they automatically demonstrate the symptoms of a, that these symptoms vanish uh -huh. and they feel worthy and they feel God can use them and they use language. But we the other segment of American society that's educated and articulate, they need this broken down. Yeah. They need to have someone say to them, this is why you have this symptom. This is it right here. You have never formally, and Christians running around by the millions. In the third world, again, this is not the issue. Yeah. Uh, many family structures in poverty are intact yes. in the third world in Latin America. Mm -hmm. But then they know this but they don't need the kind of articulation that we need in America yeah. to, be, to have it broken down and explained. So an orphan heart is specifically that. Yeah. A person that with an absent father, and how did we get, you know, I said it before. You, you, you look at the pimp and the player exalted in all dramas. Young men grow up with these role models that it is the pimp who's the hero. Mm -hmm. It is the woman dominator. It's the player who doesn't, take care of what he, the problems he creates. Yeah. And then the good man goes to family court, gets bashed and can't have his kids. And oftentimes there's a bias there. All of this adds up. Mm -hmm. 
And it, it's really uh, the curse that's on America. Yeah. Well, I think also, too, that uh, what's going on in our nation, too, is that, uh, speak to Christians for just a moment, those that attend church and things like that, is that oftentimes what they're looking for is a scapegoat. Let's just put the kids in, in Christian school which is good. Let's put the kids in a Sunday school. That's okay. But that can't take the place of a mother and a father because there's, there's, we look on today and, and I know our church has nice facilities, but churches that don't have nice facilities, it still comes down to what, what takes care of those kids is the presence of parents. So even in a home where there's uh, good parents, you can still have absentee parents that just stand back and, and uh, shove responsibility on other people. You know, Bob, my spiritual heroes as evangelists are three men. They're all, all living right now. Mm -hmm. All of them have lost children. A couple of them overdosed on drugs. Uh -huh. One of them who was my spiritual hero, I looked at him and I said, I have a son, can you give me any advice on being a father? <laughs> and he looked at me straight as he could be and I admired his transparency, but it scared me to death. He said, why are you asking me how to be a father? I was a total failure as a father. The thing that God had to do in me with my son is I had to realize that I couldn't be a perfect dad, that I wouldn't always say the right thing, that I hadn't read all the books, mm -hmm. that I was not a James Dobson poster child for parenthood. But to love my son and be there and make all the mistakes and embarrass him in public and hug him when he didn't want to be. But, but I think it's just that raw determination to say, you know what? And, and I hate this lie called quality time, yeah. this invention. There's n quality time, that's like, you know, you're going to micromanage something that requires a great deal of, of effort. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as quality time. There's only time. That's right. Uh, I've, I've min ministered before on, on, uh, on quality time, family time, prayer time, all this. And I've had some people get upset with me because we didn't have those times set aside with our kids where we read the Bible to them. And we didn't have times set aside where we just prayed with them. It was all day long. It was mingled in with life. We took, we took movies and, and expressed, look, this is the right thing, the wrong exactly. thing to do. Television shows. And uh, we took it from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 that when you're walking, you talk about God. When you eat your meal, when you walk through the post of the door, when you wake up in the morning. Jesus doesn't want to be relegated to just 15 minutes over here, an hour over here. Uh, and those are fine because we do have those times in our life where we go to church and do this, but church shouldn't be this hour and a half that we go on Sunday morning or a midweek service. It's got to be throughout the week so that he gets into every single part of our life. The fact that Jesus could walk down the road and be talking to his disciples and stop and minister to a woman, then go back talking to his disciples. It's just mingled in throughout all of life. And wow. uh, I think that's a very Powerful. important important thing that, to do. And I feel better about how I did it because <laughs> that's what I did. It was impossible to predict schedule. Yes. You know, that's, that's a myth. And you know, these symptoms of the, of the orphan heart, if I could just say this, Jesus said that some seed fell on good ground, hard ground, the, all of that real quickly. Everyone's heart is like soil. Mm -hmm. It's a different degree. The, think of the hard ground. You could fertilize it. You could rain on it. You could put the seed in it. Nothing's going to happen. That's the amputated spirit. That's the orphan heart. Oh. So you layer all of this work. You read all these books, how to be, and women especially, issues with their dead. I mean, that's a whole nother ocean of issues mm -hmm. because men that were afraid to be physically affectionate, right. to hug. And this, this, okay, feeling like you're on the bottom even after you're successful, constantly changing your circle of friends with this subconscious feeling like I'm being found out, so I better move right, on. Right. Third is you don't finish projects, you start. This is not mere procrastination. It's this feeling like, unless I can get this perfect, I'm gonna quit. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'll explain why in a moment. And the other is this need for approval from this phantom. You know, this, I need this approval. And I, I feel like I don't have it. And it's especially seen if people give you compliments. Mm -hmm. You know, you did great. Well, they're, they're lying. They're not telling the truth. It's like there's this, this layer that says, I can't accept this compliment. Mm -hmm. And then they literally sabotage their own success. You look at all these celebrities. They're up there, up there. And then it's almost like they go out of their way to do something bizarre. And the, the people say, well, that's Paris Hilton thinking she'll get free publicity. No, that's Paris Hilton out of her mind. And she is 
literally looking at this, this is not going to last, it's not going to happen, it's going to all fall apart. And it's because of this. They say, this is not going to last. Someone's going to hurt me. Someone's going to fire me. Someone's going to mess me up. So I'm going to mess myself up before. It's like when you're in, or in an interracial group and you don't want to say anything racist. You're so afraid you're going to say something racist that you what? End up saying something racist. Mm -hmm. So this feeling of going through life like you're walking on thin ice, like you're always going to... This, I saw it in the gangs, but then it, it spread to the whole panorama of American yeah. culture. Yeah, but you know what? Really, as you're talking about this, those are things I experience. Those are things I feel. I just have to have somebody to go to to cast it on. And without the Lord, you have no one to go to because these are just normal feelings. How many times have I heard compliments? And I think, oh, they're not really. Yeah, right. But I have to stop and think about, no, nope, they're being sincere. I have to have somewhere to go to to cast it on and get it from a, new, a different right. light. And that's seeing things through the eyes of the Lord. A Christian has that, uh, you know, uh, privilege in his life. Oh. He has that, that wonderful thing to do. And uh, that's what's so important for the people watching this program. They too can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So. I believe with all of my heart that the most important thing a person will ever do in their life is to let God become their father and to understand that he is the father that wasn't, you know, when you were growing up, dad missed that game, wasn't there when you won that award, didn't hug you, and always constantly picked at the negatives and made you feel like you were, it was never good enough. See, without the, the Holy Spirit, you're never going to get rid of that. It's when you come to God and say, you be my father. Hebrews says this. Furthermore, we had fathers after our flesh. They disciplined them, us as it seemed best to them. Would we not much rather be subject to the father of spirits and live? And that's precisely why you are watching, whether you're, if you are a Christian, you need to have that benefit that you've, it's overdue. But if you do not know Christ, and believe me, I know all the religious games that are being played today, but you know in your heart that you're looking for something that cannot be found in a book, in a person, in a medication. It is in this specific miracle of going to God and saying, I am lost. Now I see the cross. The cross was God dealing with the, the wicked sin that separated humanity from the love they should have known and from the love they should have offered God. You see, it's all about this. God wants me to love him, but he didn't want to force it. He created something that would choose to love him. And right now that choice to say, I refuse to live as a slave, to hurt anymore and to know God is, the, is a powerful decision. And it's one that I believe you don't put off. You don't wait. There's no right moment. It's the perception of your need that distinguishes that this is the day of your salvation mm -hmm. right now. Because it's God that's letting you know this. Think about that. You know, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, it says that repentance is a gift. Mm -hmm. That God literally gives you the gift of this flash of sanity. Whoa, this is what I need to do. And when that comes, you have to run with it. And I believe it's coming for people that are watching right, right now. Yeah. You know, in our church, when I have prayer lines, I'll just minister to people, say, you know, what needs do you have? And, and specifically on loneliness or taking care of your children, it's amazing to me how many women come forward and men don't come forward. It's amazing to me how many women in our church are single moms. And it far outstrips the number of single fathers we have in our church. So yes. this is a phenomenon across our country. Is this, is this something you've seen? Well, what I want to say right to the point is, yes, it's, it's, a, it's pandemic and it's very important especially in the ghetto where the mother is the dominant figure and there, there are single mothers watching and I can, feel, I can understand how you would feel worse from part of this broadcast and better because you're already dealing every day with the absence of a dad and the feeling like, am I really messing up my children because they don't have a dad? I want to tell you where this comes in now. The Bible says that God is the father of the fatherless and he sets the lonely in families. I believe God's fatherhood takes a quantum leap in a single mother's life. And by prayer and submission to the Lord, she's introducing the Holy Spirit to her children. And that will, will make up for the absence of that man in the, in the house. That doesn't mean that God doesn't have a mate for you. I believe he does. But you need not feel worry and stress 
and you have an advantage that the single mom who, where the Lord is not Lord of their house, you have an advantage because the Spirit of God and the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit will oversee your children and make up for that. And that's a supernatural thing. Because that's what we're saying about everyone anyway. We're not saying if you have an orphan heart, God's going to give you back your natural dad. Yes. We're saying that a supernatural father is going to step in. And that's what will happen in the family. And that's an important hope. So you're actually saying, and it's true, is that if you have a natural father, but you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're not as well off as a person that lost their father, didn't have one, but they know God and they have a personal relationship with Him. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's absolutely true. If you've done this, if you've opened up your heart while this program's been on, you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, that flash of sanity he talked about, we would like to hear from you. We have a website called realanswers.tv. We would love to hear from you. Your testimony, how that you accepted Jesus, because you know what? We're not here for ourselves. We're not here just preaching a sermon or things that sound good. These are real answers from the Word of God, real answers that will change your life. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you next week on Real Answers with Bob Yandian.